Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my experience flying a as The Room Business Class from San Francisco to Tokyo Narita. I originally booked an economy ticket, however, I was able to upgrade to business class at the airport, so without further ado, let's get right into the video. I just made it through priority security, which was included in my business class ticket. And that was really nice since the security line was pretty long today and that really sped things up. But now I'm going to be heading over to the United Polaris Lounge, which is included with my business class ticket. I just made inside the Polaris Lounge here and I was lucky because I was able to score a reservation at their exclusive restaurant and I just have to wait around 30 minutes for them to start lunch service and I'm looking forward to my meal there but in the meantime this lounge is a really great place to relax. Compared to when I visited this lounge last year, it's so relaxed today and it's a great place to hang out before your flight. I made it here inside the restaurant and I really love the decor and vibe in here. It's really small so it feels really exclusive and I love all the large windows showing a beautiful view of the airport. I decided to order a small plate and I got their crab cake with remoulade sauce. Mm. What a delicious crab cake, perfectly crispy and warm on the outside and the inside is just tender, fresh, sweet, succulent crab meat and I love the sauce as well. It just adds a beautiful creaminess and a slight tartness. After waiting around for quite a while, my entree finally came out and it's the chicken and I'm looking forward to this. However, I'm going to have to eat it really quick because I actually need to leave the lounge in just under 10 minutes. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is really not bad for airport lounge food. The chicken is a bit dry since it's chicken breast and it is a bit overcooked, but it's made up by the fact that there's a really nice broth on the bottom, so that really moistens things up. And I love the garlicky flavor in here as well. And you also got some spinach and potatoes on the side. This is really quite tasty. However, I know the food is gonna be even better on our flight, but actually I gotta get going pretty quick because our plane is about to start boarding really soon. I just made it to my seat and it already looks incredible. The flight attendant introduced herself and she was super friendly, but I'll see you once we're up in the air. Good afternoon, dear passengers. Welcome on board ANA and Amber Star Alliance Flight 7 for Narita. The captain in command of this flight is Namba and I am the chief partner Araki. It's only about 30 minutes after takeoff and they just brought out drinks and it's about time to start the meal service. For my drink I ordered their signature citrus kabozi drink and this is my favorite drink to get whenever I fly on a, a That is delicious, it just tastes like freshly squeezed yuzu juice, wonderfully citrusy, slightly tart and a little bit sweet since it's made with honey and this is the perfect drink for your flight. Before the main meal, they brought out a little bit of small bites. They brought out some mozzarella and marinated vegetables, as well as pork pâté. I'm going to go ahead and start off with our mozzarella first. That is absolutely delicious. You got fresh, tender mozzarella covered in a creamy pesto sauce. And there's also a little bit of squash in there as well. This is just a perfect little thing to just stimulate your appetite at the very beginning of the meal. Now let's go ahead and try out the pork pate. Oh, how delicious is that? I can't believe I'm eating this in the sky. Beautiful, rich pork pate, and it tastes really fresh as well. You just get a very slight livery flavor, but you can tell they're using high quality pork. And then beneath that, you just have a thin piece of toast, and that's just the perfect pairing. The next selection of dishes before the main course have just come out. I'm going to be starting off with the cold sesame tofu. That is delicious. You have a buttery, rich sesame tofu, and then a little bit of soy flavor as well. And I love how it's topped off with perfect little slices of okra. 
They also have some fresh greens topped off with salmon roe and crab. And this was a dish that I remember from last year as well, just like that sesame tofu. And this is another winner. That is just fantastic as well. It's fresh, juicy, crunchy spinach, perfectly cooked because it's not mushy at all. And then on top, you have the sweet crab meat. And then as you bite into the salmon roe, they just burst in your mouth with a wonderful, salty, and umami, briny, rich flavor. We also have a little bit of the smoked duck to try as well, just a singular piece. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong with the duck eater. I love that it's a cut of the dark meat to get a really rich and earthy flavor. And I love how there's also a nice layer of skin on top as well, which adds that extra touch. We also have the salmon wrapped cream cheese. Mm. Oh, that is incredible. That's gotta be one of the best appetizer dishes that's on this platter. You just have a nice large piece of cream cheese and it's wrapped in a generous amount of smoked salmon and a smoky flavor plus the cream cheese is just pure heaven. One of my favorite dishes last time was this seared yellowtail salad with wasabi dressing so I'm so happy that they have it again on this flight. Oh that is just incredible. If you love sashimi, this is going to be great for you. The dressing is just this wonderfully aromatic flavor of ginger and wasabi. And then the fish itself is so clean tasting. And I really love how the yellowtail is seared because it really just brings out the natural, delicious, sweet flavor of the fish. Now that I finished up my small dishes, the main entree should be coming out shortly. My entree just came out and the Japanese meal comes with the grilled rockfish and the sweet sake sauce. This is seriously unbelievable that I'm having this high quality of food on a plane. The fish is so delicate and tender and the sweet sake is the perfect touch. It just brings this gentle yet rich sweetness that pairs perfectly with the fish. It's actually really unbelievable the quality of fish that I've had on this flight so far. Everything from the seared yellowtail to the grilled rockfish it has all been fresh, delicious, and perfectly done. Of course, I couldn't forget about dessert. For a choice of dessert, they either had a brownie or a cheese and fruit, so I decided to go for their chocolate brownie and a raspberry sauce. I'm definitely impressed with the brownie. It's really high quality. I love the chocolate they use in there. It's ultra rich and chocolatey. It's nice and sweet, but the best part about it is on top you have raspberry sauce, so it feels nice and luxurious. And you also have vanilla sauce on the bottom. And not to mention, it's a really large portion. So you're definitely gonna be satisfied after enjoying this brownie for dessert. Now that meal service is finished, I'm going to give you a tour of this incredible business class suite and it's always been on my bucket list to fly on an airline suite. First of all, I got to show you the amount of leg room in this seat. So far, I can stretch my legs all the way out and I can't even touch the back of the seat so there's plenty of room there and then later I'm going to show you how the lay flat bed works but for now, let's go over all the other amenities that we get with the seat. Another cool feature of the seat are the windows since the electronic leak can be raised and open. There's also multiple seat features. Currently, the seating position is in a dining position, which means it's straight up. There's also a position for takeoff, which is slightly reclined. And then there's a third position, and I'm not quite sure what that one is. There's also various lights on here as well for reading lights. If we hit this first light right here, it looks like this one is good for the dining, since it shines right here, and eventually it ends up going onto the tray table, which is tucked in right in this little section. This button right here is for the reading lights, and this is going to be great if you want to read a book in the dark. Right here, there's one more light, and that just lights up right underneath the screen. So I guess that's kind of cool, it's just like a little bit of mood lighting. The best feature, however, is the sliding doors to make up the suite. The first button is right up here next to the screen, and then your second button is right here next to your armrest. First, if we press the button on the side, it brings up this little side divider. And then if we hit this button, it's going to close the suite fully. And just like that, you have your little private suite. 
And then if we want to remove the barriers, we can go ahead and press this one straight down. And then we can press this one to the side. Also, another important feature right here is we got a USB port that you can use to charge your phone. They also just changed the lights to some nice mood lighting, so it definitely changed the color, but showing up on camera it does get a little bit flickery, but it's not like that at all in person. Right here we have the remote for the giant screen, and on it you also have the flight attendant call button. The screen itself is absolutely gigantic. Just for reference, here is how my hand looks against the screen. I mean, it's really hard to tell, but this is actually huge because it's bigger than a commuter monitor that I have at home. Right now it's pulled up to the camera view, and we can quickly change it to the forward view as well. And overall, I really just love that they have this screen feature since it's really nice to look at the scenery as you're flying around. And now let's go over to in-flight entertainment. This is the main home screen once you go to the entertainment section. Let's take a look and see what types of movies they have. It definitely looks like they have a nice selection of tons of Hollywood movies, so definitely going to find something interesting for everyone, as they have such a great selection of many different blockbuster movies. Now let's go for amenities, and everything comes in this plastic bag. First of all, we have our a, a slippers, and these are quite comfortable actually, since I used these last year and they were pretty nice. We also have ourselves some headphones. And of course we have an amenity bank, and actually recently they switched their amenity banks from leather to fabric to be more environmentally friendly, but it still feels like a decent quality bank. Right inside of our amenity bank we have a little bit of lip balm as well as body lotion. They also give you what I believe to be a reusable bag. That's actually everything that they give you in an amenity bag, but they have more items in the bathroom like mouthwash, toothpaste, and toothbrushes, so you really have everything you need on this flight. Now I'm going to be showing you how the lay flat bed works. First of all, they give you two pillows. This white one is more of a firmer one. This blue pillow is a nice soft and fluffy one. You also have a blanket, which I won't be needing since it's a pretty warm flight. And finally, there's a mat for you to place down on your seat before you lay down. For the lay flat bed, I believe this third button is the button to press to make it flat since I've already tried out the other two buttons. Let's go ahead and turn this into a full flat bed. And just like that, we are now laying flat. The last step of this full flat bed is we're going to go ahead and place this comfortable mattress down. On top you have the design, and then on the bottom you have this blue part that is actually going to be touching the seat. Now that I've placed down my cushion and my pillow, let's see how this feels. Wow, that is so nice. It is very comfortable, and you are certainly going to have a great night's rest. However, I'm personally probably not going to be sleeping since this is a daytime flight. I also noticed that these pillows are huge. Compared to the pillows they had last year in business class, these pillows are pretty much full size, and they definitely do fit the room quite nicely. The room is also very spacious. I'm only 5'3", but there's plenty of room for me to stick my feet out. However, I heard for taller people that are like 6 feet or taller, they do have to rotate their body a bit and sleep diagonal, but everybody says it's still quite comfortable. The room suite is actually ridiculously wide. I mean, look, I could practically stretch out my body almost the entire weight because of how wide the seat is. This is quite comfortable for a lay flat bed. I mean, the seat itself is already nice and cushy and padded, and then on top of that you have the mattress, so once you lay down on top of the mattress pad and the pillow and the soft seat, it is really comfortable, and I definitely do notice it being a lot more cushy and soft compared to the old a and business class that I flew on last year. The reason I think these room seats are so comfortable, because all the planes that have these were made in 2019 or later, so it basically means all of these seats are either 5 years old or newer. I also thought I'd talk about the configuration of the cabin for the room. So the current seat I'm in is a forward-facing seat, however they alternate between forward and rear-facing seats, so that's something you're going to want to keep in mind when you're booking your seat. Now let's go over the pros and cons of the forward and rear facing seats. So for the forward facing seat that I'm currently in, I think it's great because I feel like it's really nice to be facing forwards when I'm flying in a plane. However, one of the cons that I find with these forward facing seats is there is this table right here, which means you're quite far from the window, so it's a little bit hard to look out the window when takeoff or during landing. However, I feel like that's a really good problem to have. This just shows you how much space there is in this suite. 
For the rear facing seats, the Pro is that you're much closer to the window. So it's basically like a more traditional business class seat where you're pressed up right against the window. And then the table is going to be more on this side, closer to the door. So that is a great benefit. However, I think for some people, including myself, I may get motion sick when booking a rear facing seat. So you definitely want to be sure of what seat you're going to reserve when making a reservation for business class. It's actually crazy how fast this flight is going by because there's only six hours and 55 minutes left on our flight. Now that we have around five and a half hours left in our flight, I think it's the perfect time to do the call button challenge. While the service on that was incredibly fast, it only took 27 seconds. I just ordered a corn soup because I've heard that it's really good. Oh, that is so nice. The corn soup has a rich, velvety, smooth texture, and it's got such an intensely sweet and fresh corn flavor. That is the perfect thing to warm you up mid-flight. It's just so delicious. You definitely can't miss out on the corn soup, which is one of the items that you can order anytime during your flight. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up, and I'll see you again when it's time for breakfast. We're just around two hours from landing and it's time for breakfast and once again I had to go with the Japanese option. For breakfast, the first item I want to start off with is their fried chicken eggplant, which is their small dish and that just sounds ridiculously decadent and delicious. That is another solid dish. I love the juicy eggplant and the chicken is really nice and moist as well. It's very simply flavored, so it's a very mild dish, but I'm never gonna say no to eggplant and fried chicken for breakfast. I mean, it's just great. You really can't go wrong with it. And for the main dish, this time we have the simmer of mackerel. Mackerel is one of my favorite fish to eat, especially on a &E. They do it so perfectly because it is such a fatty and oily fish that really has so much flavor and it tastes like it was just freshly made even though I've already been on a plate for hours. It just tastes like it's been freshly made which is just kind of mind-boggling. And then it's in this beautiful sauce. It's just like a sweet and savory soy sauce. And there's also some green onions and lotus root in there as well. And of course you gotta have rice on the side. I feel like this lotus root is going to be quite tasty. Again, the lotus root is crisp, and crunchy, and perfectly cooked. I, I know I've already said that pretty much all the food is perfectly cooked, but I'm just repeating it because I don't understand how they do it. Everything just tastes perfect. This is seriously a five-star Japanese breakfast in the sky. I also decided to get a little bit of hot coffee. Let's get a little sip of our coffee now. You can't ever go wrong with a hot cup of coffee and it's gonna be the perfect thing just to wake me up a bit. Overall, this was an amazing breakfast and the perfect thing right before landing. Our flight will be landing shortly, so I'll be giving you my final thoughts once we're back on the ground. Now that our flight is coming to an end, I want to give you my final thoughts on a &E's The Room Business Class. First off, the airport experience was great. I have priority security, and today the line at security was about 20 minutes long, so having priority security helped me skip that long line. Lounge access is also quite nice. Although the United Polaris Lounge isn't my favorite lounge, it still elevates the travel experience. Once I stepped on board, I was instantly welcomed by the cabin crew. I just want to give a special shout out to my flight attendant Shibuya for making this the best service I've ever had on the flight. The food was incredible as it always is on Amy's business class and it can't be missed out on. 
The seat was also insane as it was so spacious, and honestly there's no reason why anyone would need any more space on a plane. Now you might be wondering at this point, is it really worth it to fly A&A's to room business class? Well, the truth is it depends. If you have the budget for business class, then go for it, because this is really as good as business class gets in the entire world. But don't worry, if you're broke like I am, there's still two ways that you can fly business class. One way is by getting an upgrade at the airport on a day of, just like I did, and this is really going to depend on person to person on how much you're going to be willing to pay for an upgrade. The other way you can book the seat is by using credit card points and miles, which is pretty difficult and takes some skill, but I think going through the hassle is totally worth it. Overall, this was an incredible bucket list item for me as I've always wanted to fly in an airplane suite. If you all get the chance, you should definitely try and fly a and The Room Business Class at least once in your life. It is such a memorable experience that you will cherish for the rest of your life. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure if you did to give it a like, and also make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video in Japan.